Here is the policy of the 2020 US Open. No spectators. And I think that's a given. We've had no spectators for sports all around the world, uh, except for uh, you know select events. I think some uh, soccer matches in other countries and stuff, depending on the country. Uh, players can bring up to three people uh, per hotel. So they're going to have an official hotel area or a hotel for the players. And you can bring up to three people. So coach, physio, nutrition, uh, wife, kids, I don't know, whatever, whoever you want to bring, whoever you need to bring, uh, you can bring up to three people or you can actually rent out a house and bring as many people as you want. So Djokovic, for example, who was a little bit skeptical about this rule because he didn't want to just bring one person. He's got a huge entourage. Nadal has probably the biggest entourage out of everybody. He's got, you know, it seems like the full coach's box every match he plays. Um, they can they can hire out a house and be able to, you know, go from the house, uh, you know, with as many people as they want. Are they allowed in the stadium with as many people as they want? That's a different question. We don't know. 128 singles player in the draw, so no change to that. But the difference is no qualifiers, direct entry to the first 120 players in the world. So if you're in the top 120, you are automatically going to be playing the US Open. And then there's going to be eight wild cards who will uh, be given out. So usually it's the Australian, uh, the French Federation, the uh, the UK, and then a couple of others around uh, America as well. So 120 players, direct entry. If you're in the top 120, you're safe. Uh, probably if you're in the top 100, you're safe. If you're in the, in the top 120, uh, it might chop and change depending on that Cincinnati tournament before. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the go there. And then a 32 double uh, team doubles draw. No qualifiers, no mixed doubles, no wheelchair tennis, no juniors. Lines people will only play uh, only be at uh, the stadiums. So outside of the stadiums, there's probably going to be Hawkeye involved. Maybe the umpire is going to call the shots uh, with Hawkeye being the backup of a player, you know, disputing the call and can Hawkeye uh, review it. Ball kids will vary per court. So I think on the actual main stadium, normal schedule of ball kids, you know, I think six on the court, something like that. But on the outside courts, there's only going to be a handful of ball kids, maybe two or three, uh, which is more than what we're being seen because uh, in some of the other tournaments, it's been, you know, call your own shots uh, and pick up the balls yourself. So there is going to be a little bit of that. And then the $60 million prize money overall, um, I mean, of course, it's going to be a reduced prize money from last year uh, and pro probably from previous years gone. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that really, uh, it's a factor for the for the people, you know, for obviously the, the, the lower ranked players, but for the top guys, I mean, if, you know, Nadal and Djokovic are playing, I don't think they're, focus is prize money i think their focus is winning the title but that is the res uh, the changes on the policy so a lot of changes it'll be different uh it'll be different to any u.s open we've ever seen before the french open you'd expect would be very similar uh maybe a little bit less strict maybe some spectators can come in maybe they can bring more people in maybe the draw has qualifiers um and maybe some more events but the u.s open obviously new york is the epicenter of the pandemic at the moment well it has been for a while and um and they've got the strictest results, but they're going ahead. So that's good for us. It's good for fans. We get to watch the tennis. It's not great for New York fans who can't go watch the tennis in live, but uh, it is great for for, uh, for on TV, watching the, watching the tennis on TV. I don't know if they're going to do artificial noise. They're going to bring in, you know, a lot of sports seem to be doing fake noise, be doing, um, you know, fake cheering, crowds. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, I mean, I think it, it works, like... If you watch our live shows, we do that all the time. We press buttons, we have a soundboard, uh, and we do that. And I, I think it works. It brings a bit more atmosphere to the uh, to the matches, even if the players, uh, maybe it even pumps the players up. Who knows? I mean, the UTS are doing it really well, uh, the Ultimate Tennis Showdown, using uh, you know artificial crowd noise. Um, it kind of does bring it something extra to the broadcast. So that's probably going to be... Uh, be happening but it is an empty stadium after all you know you look around and there's no one in the stands uh, but you can hear a thousand people screaming it's you know it will be interesting but i'm excited the tennis is on it's just a shame that there's uh you know less events less opportunity uh for players outside the top 100 which is going to be tough for them because they probably rely on first round second round matches at the u.s open uh but also if the big guns aren't playing it gives it might give us a new champion 